Um, so, do you remember when plastic bags were first banned from grocery stores? I do, and it sucked, because my dad and I would always forget to bring our bags. We would have to choose between buying yet another bag or carrying the groceries out to the store in our arms. It was awful. And after buying dozens of bags and wasting money, we had to consciously put the bags in the side of his car door so that we wouldn't forget them. We had to rethink how we did things to accommodate the new movement. And that's why I'm here tonight, to share with you my idea about how we have to rethink our driving. Ever since the beginning of the Industrial Revolution, CO2 emissions have been skyrocketing. And even when I was a kid, global warming wasn't something that I really heard about. However, climate change, which at one point seemed far away, is now something that I fear can and will affect me and my friends. That is why we need to rethink the way that we look at climate change, just as my dad and I had to rethink how we used plastic, but reused our reusable bags. I didn't realize that once we reach a certain level of CO2 in the atmosphere, there will be no way to prevent or reverse the melting of our ice caps. Once the ice caps shrink, they won't be there to reflect the sunlight. Instead, they will be replaced by the dark blue oceans, which absorb the sunlight, heating the water and accelerating the melting of the ice caps. When I fully comprehended the implications of our situation, I was motivated to found my organization, when not if, as in when climate change will affect us, not if it will. And my mission for the past two years has been to inform people of ways that they can reduce their driving. Did you know that every year we produce around 76 trillion pounds of CO2? A trillion of anything is hard for me to visualize, so I use an elephant to help put it into perspective. A large African elephant, like this one, weighs around 14,000 pounds. So, to fully comprehend the massive amounts of CO2 produced each year, add around 5 billion more elephants to that one. It's still hard for me to visualize. These 76 trillion pounds come from heat and electricity generation, transportation, and manufacturing. And we don't have control over many of these things. But we as individuals do have control over the emissions coming from our daily transportation. And that's what led me to the conclusion that the easiest way for us as individuals to reduce our CO2 emissions is to reduce the emissions coming from our cars. Every gallon of gas that powers a vehicle produces around 20 pounds of CO2 emissions. And there are 1.2 billion cars on the road today. If we all worldwide reduced our driving by just 10%, we could prevent 2.5 billion pounds of CO2 from entering the atmosphere in a single day. And if we continued this for the whole year, 1.5 trillion pounds. This can happen if we all start to rethink the way that we drive. What I mean by rethinking driving is to think about our modes of transportation and to think about consolidating and eliminating our excess trips. When I was in elementary school, both my parents worked full time and couldn't take me to school or baseball practice. So I had to bike or get a ride with another family. Because there was no other way to get me there, I had to rethink, I didn't, my parents had to rethink the way that I was transported. And this has become the norm for most families because everyone is so busy. But we as individuals need to continue to rethink our driving. When I first got my driver's license, excited about my newfound freedom, I drove everywhere and left my once neon yellow bike to rust. I stopped needing to rethink my modes of transportation and instead started creating excessive amounts of CO2. At an event while talking to people about the impacts of rising CO2 levels, one lady said to me that reducing her driving would be too inconvenient. I tried to convince her to drive just one mile less each week, but she refused. At first, I was disappointed and couldn't understand how anyone would find just one mile too inconvenient. But now that I've been driving for almost two years, I can understand. Driving is ingrained in our lives, and it's no longer a luxury. We drive everywhere for everything. And when I got my driver's license, instead of walking to school, which was just a 10-minute walk, I started driving every day because it was easier. And sadly, I was late more often once I got my license. 
Even though it may take time and energy that you don't want to give to find different ways to get to work or to get to other places, we still need to do it. When I got my first job at the Santa Cruz Beach Boardwalk, I took the bus downtown and then a shuttle to the actual amusement park. I did this because of the tourist traffic and it being so heavy that it would take me twice as long to get there, but I still did it. And some of my friends, they meet at Starbucks on their way to school and they drive the rest of the way from there, which saves them time and money and also eliminates some of their CO2 emissions. The common theme across all these stories is that we had to rethink our modes of transportation to solve certain problems. And even though your commutes may be fine, it's still good to try and rethink other modes of transportation. Another area that we can rethink is the distance and amount of driving that we do. Last summer, I was working downtown, and after I was done with work, I would go and spend time with my friends who live 20 miles away. Spending time with my friends meant driving back downtown and going for food or to see a movie. Then, once we were done there, I would drive them back to their house. I was driving around 65 miles a day and a whopping 450 miles per week, costing me over $200 a month on gas, which was most of my paycheck. And on top of that, I entered my distance-driven 450 miles and miles per gallon for my car, 27 miles per gallon, into my website, and it showed me that I was producing 325 pounds of CO2 every week. I felt so guilty that I stopped driving to my friend's house and back. Instead, I had them take the bus and meet me downtown. By doing this, I reduced my CO2 emissions by 50%. If we all plan our trips like a UPS driver, where the routes are optimized to minimize the distance driven and therefore save time and money, then we'll also save time and money. Instead of weaving back and forth across town, plan out your weekend errands so that you don't have to drive everywhere back and forth, back and forth. Instead, you can just make one trip like my dad does. When he shops at Safeway, he shops at other stores along the way, doing all of his shopping on Monday nights. By keeping a list and being prepared, he saves time by not wandering around the store impulse buying things, as well as reducing his CO2 emissions by not going to multiple stores multiple times. We as a society need to rethink the way that we look at climate change. When people first started recycling, it was awkward, and people forgot. But now, at least I do it without a second thought. And that's how we need to think about driving. If we all in this room reduce driving by just 10%, we could prevent almost 100,000 pounds of CO2 from entering the atmosphere every year. And once we do that, if we tell five more people, then we can continue the... Um, we can continue the cycle of getting more and more people involved. Once we do this, we can prevent even more CO2 from entering the atmosphere. So tomorrow, I challenge all of you, plan a way to get to work that's different from your method now in order to save CO2 emissions. And also, plan out your weekend errands so that you can reduce your CO2 emissions there. By joining the others, and rethinking the way that we drive tomorrow, we can all be an active contributor to the solution of climate change. Thank you.